When we think of great military blunders, they often tend to be quite tragic. But this one is the only one which I genuinely believe is quite funny. You keep thinking, what could happen next? How could they possibly get any more stupid? And then they do. It's like something from a carry-on film. And whilst, yes, unfortunately, people did die, in my dark and twisted sense of humour, I find the whole episode to be totally absurd and hilarious. It caused a diplomatic crisis between Britain and Russia and happened off the coast of Hull. So let's look at this part of Yorkshire's hidden history. Churches, battles, kings and queens, factories and big machines, castles, forts and in-betweens, the stories that I told. So let's set the scene. It's 1904 and Russia is at war with Japan. The Russians decide to send a fleet 18,000 miles around the world to join up with the rest of the fleet in the Far East. They stop off briefly off the coast of Denmark to pick up some coal, and whilst doing so, the Admiral, whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, makes extensive precautions against a night attack by Japanese torpedo boats. You see, he's received some worrying reports that there are Japanese torpedo boats stationed off the coast of Denmark. For this to be true, which it wasn't, it would have meant that these tiny little ships with limited range had sailed 20,000 miles around the world to chill out in the North Sea. In addition, there were rumours that the Japanese had mined the North Sea, which again is baffling considering that Japan and Britain were actually allies at the time, and it's a little bit inconsiderate to start putting mines in your allies' doorstep. In fairness to the Russians, their navy was a bit of a mess. Most of the crew were inexperienced peasants, and a lot of them actually had no experience at sea. So it's fairly easy to see why they believe these wild rumours. In addition, they had plenty of good reason to be scared of these torpedo boats. They were small and hard to detect, and even a single torpedo could easily sink a ship. In fact, the Japanese had a reputation for surprise attacks. They'd actually started the war by, and this might sound familiar, launching a secret attack on ships at port. So it was natural for them to be utterly terrified and paranoid about these rumours. At 8 o'clock on the evening of the 21st of October, one of the ships, the Kamchatka, encountered Swedish fishing vessels. Believing them naturally to be these Japanese torpedo boats, they started to fire on them, but because the gunnery was so poor, miraculously there were no injuries. Prior to this, they'd fired on other fishermen who were carrying news from the Tsar to the ships. Ironically, it was news saying that the Admiral had been promoted to Vice Admiral. Again, miraculously, there were no injuries. At 8.45, the captain of the Kamchatka sent a message to the Admiral saying that he'd been attacked on all sides by eight torpedo boats. On the dark and foggy morning of the 22nd of October, they sailed into the North Sea and encountered fishing boats from Hull. Naturally believing these to be the Japanese torpedo boats, they opened fire. In the ensuing chaos, two British sailors died with the further six wounded. Seven Russian battleships managed to fire on their own ships, believing them to be Japanese, and two Russian sailors died. Aboard the Borodino, the sailors believed that they were actually being boarded by the Japanese. They proceeded to grab life vests and lay on the deck whilst others ran around wielding cutlasses. On one battleship, over 500 shells were fired and not a single target was hit. After 20 minutes, the battle was over and the order was given to stop firing. This caused diplomatic pandemonium in Britain, not least because they were in an alliance with Japan. Whilst the Russian government did apologise quite quickly, the public wanted revenge, and a fleet was assembled. Luckily, war was avoided. Now, that's the story of Dogabankova. But before I finish, I want to tell you what happened to the Russian fleet. I know it's not related to Yorkshire, but I'm going to do it anyway, because it's funny and be missing out if I didn't. Unfortunately, it does have a tragic ending, so just enjoy the funny bits whilst you've got them. As a fleet rounded Morocco, they'd lost contact with the Kamchatka for a few days, but it reappeared later, bearing news that it had encountered three Japanese torpedo boats and fired over 300 shells. Naturally, these boats had turned out to be civilian fishing vessels. As they left Morocco, they accidentally severed the underwater telegraph cable to Europe. As the fleet neared South Africa, morale was at an all-time low. To improve morale, the crew were allowed to gather exotic animals from the shore and keep them as pets. This meant that there were now all manner 
of exotic animals wandering about the deck, including crocodiles and birds. One commanding officer got bitten by a poisonous snake, which had wrapped itself around a gun. As they reached Madagascar, more death and disease had set in. At a funeral service, the Kamchatka fired a salute, but they accidentally fired a real shell, which hit one of their own ships. <laughs> Later, the Admiral ordered target practice. Not a single shell hit the target, but one did manage to hit the boat pulling the target. Finally, they rejoined the main Russian fleet for the Battle of Tsushima. This was a horrific defeat for the Russians and was the first time that an Eastern power had defeated a European power. 4,000 Russian sailors died compared to little over 100 Japanese. Now that's a very depressing end to the story, but I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless and that you've learnt something new. If not, then the remarkable stupidity of pre-First World War Russian sailors. <laughs>